so uh, if i talk about this uh, config map and secrets so what is the use case of both the attributes about the components within the kubernetes mm, both objects uh, is used for storing something let's say uh, um, in config maps, uh, we will store insensitive data, mm -hmm. maybe uh, the username of the registry, uh, Docker registry, uh, and uh, some insensitive data, uh, maybe username of a database. Uh, whereas okay. when coming to this uh, uh, secret, uh, as the name suggests, uh, we will use the sensitive data like passwords. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... I have this uh, application for which I have to do the deployment and I'm looking for someone who can suggest me the deployment strategy, which deployment strategy will be suitable for me. And I'm expecting that it should be zero downtime uh, strategy, the deployment strategy. So which strategy I can opt in? Um, during the upgrades? Yeah, during the upgrades. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe we can uh, opt for a blue-green uh, deployment strategy for upgrading. Okay. Basically, in this blue-green, uh, the similar set of uh, uh, nodes will be created before uh, upgrading. Mm -hmm. So our pods will be uh, our, our pods running on the nodes uh, will be scheduled one by one to the new nodes, and then these old nodes are uh, uh, tainted. tainted. Uh, we can use code and uncode and commands. Once everything is uh, set up in this, uh, all the five nodes, then uh, when we are destroying the whole nodes, uh, the pods will start moving to this uh, new nodes. And uh, we tainted the whole nodes so that no new pods will be scheduled on the whole nodes. Okay. So uh, in Terraform, if I have to create uh, five EC2 instance of the same configuration, how can we create? We can use uh, uh, count for this if the EC2 instance has exactly same properties using count, uh, uh, we can create this. Okay. I have created this EC2 instance VPC and I want to print the ID of the VPC and the public IP address of the EC2 instance. How can we print this message on the console? Mm. We can use uh, output block to uh, print something uh, when the plan is applied. Okay. So when you run this Terraform plan, correct? You see mm -hmm. all the uh, plans are coming over there. And you want to put some checks in between, correct? So that you can verify the plan. You can then go ahead with the manual intervention. What kind of steps you can uh, like get in between so that you check in uh, manually and then you approve it and then it will go ahead so is there any mechanism to do the same uh, i didn't get the question exactly but let me uh, repeat uh, if your requirement is uh, when we are provisioning something uh, we want to uh, check manually before provisioning it is it the requirement so you have run this Terraform minute and Terraform plan through the automation. It's a kind of Jenkins pipeline you can think of. And then after mm -hmm. the Terraform plan, you want to stop the pipeline in between or just hold for one minute. And then like you will go through the Terraform plan and then you will manually uh, click on some button and then your Terraform apply command will execute. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of. Okay. Have you worked with the Jenkins? Yeah. What are all the stages you have used in Jenkins? So uh, in Teradata, um, we have a, a Java based application viewpoint, so which will, uh, which is a GUI that displays the status of the database and what, what all the jobs and all running in the database. So this is basically a Java based application. So uh, to deploy this application, uh, we are using uh, CI/CD pipelines. Uh, though uh, this is a monolithic application, uh, we use this process for faster deployment. So the stages would be uh, like uh, the Git commits will be done on the uh, Git uh, version control system. Once okay. it is done, uh, we are uh, using uh, Maven to build it. And then uh, we prepare this uh, uh, 
image uh, image we don't use docker registry we push it to teradata artifactory so once this image is pushed uh, we will uh, uh, test it and then uh, we deploy it okay so if i have to associate new server to this uh, jenkins correct there are five number of servers which is running or the five number of uh, nodes you can see uh, on which your pipelines are running correct whenever you are creating any uh, like you are trying to run any job now you want to add your specific server to this jenkins pipeline so that the new pipeline will run on this server only how can you integrate this mm. like adding one uh, your ec2 instance to your jenkins pipeline so the question is adding whenever you run your jenkins pipeline correct some job gets started executing and that job runs on some server correct right these servers are coming from somewhere correct right? on which your pipeline right. is getting executed now you want to add your server in this jenkins pipeline like i have created mm -hmm. a one ec2 instance and i want that my next job uh, the next pipeline which will run this should run on my ec2 instance so how can we associate this ec2 instance with the existing pipeline mm -hmm. is it involves jenkins master slave architecture so talking about slave nodes mm -hmm. Yeah, there is an option of configure clouds. You will get into that. You will see the associating your ec instance and all that. Like you will provide the host, you will provide the details, the key file and everything, and it can be configured there. Okay, have you worked with any APM tool as well? APM tool. Yeah, application performance monitoring tool. Uh, yeah, uh, Grafana, uh, which we use to uh, monitor the performance of one of the application we call it as dtu uh, generally uh, this utility we use to uh, migrate the data from one system to another system let's say on from to uh, cloud so uh, grafana we are using here because uh, uh, it is for our purpose only not for any customers because okay. uh, when we are using these tools to uh, transfer the data sometimes there is a failures uh, we don't know if it is with the tool itself or if it is with the uh, internal database itself so uh, in order to troubleshoot that it is taking a lot of time so in instead to recover this we come up with an idea to set up grafana to monitor this tool so using some dashboards we quickly come to know uh, if it is issue with the dtu tool itself or if it is issue with the database or the data uh, any uh, in the process process of transferring the data okay so you got error this 403 error correct while running your mm -hmm. application on the kubernetes system how will you troubleshoot this 403 uh, which means uh, i'm authenticated but uh, something is not authorized correct uh, let's say uh, maybe uh, if you are trying if ec2 is trying to access something the data which is in s3 bucket mm -hmm. uh, i will make sure like uh, this ec2 has proper permissions to get the objects from that bucket a pro proper IAM policy is attached to this EC2 and uh, in the IAM bucket policy whether it is uh, pointing to this IAM or not or not so that uh, using that I can uh, make sure okay uh, what kind of kubectl commands you will run to troubleshoot this uh, so when coming to the kubernetes uh, uh, kubectl describe pods and the pod name and kubectl get logs mm -hmm. You can use both these commands to run it. So, if the issue is with uh, Kubernetes, then maybe something in RBAC is missing. Okay. Issue with the RBAC. How will you push your local code changes to the GitHub repository? Uh, yeah, we, we are using uh, from a webhook trigger. We are integrating a webhook trigger in uh, uh, GitHub. In our Jenkins pipeline, uh, we are uh, configuring this uh, plugin, webhook plugin. Yeah. So once the code changes are uh, committed, no. uh, uh -huh. it is automatically detected in your code yeah. changes. I'm asking from the local development, like you are developing the code on your local system, on your laptop. It's a Visual Studio code, 
correct and from there you have to post it on the github repository so mm -hmm. how will you post this code 